Okay, so we're going to start building the Step 2 Extreme Roller Coaster. As you can see, you got a lot of big plastic parts you're going to be putting together. And you know, anytime you're working with plastics and, and uh, putting screws in there, it's going to be a little bit of a pain, so just uh, recognize that up front. I want to give you one tip though right away so that you don't overlook it. Inside the box, taped to the side of the box inside, very easy to overlook this, is the actual decals. So if you can't find your decals, they're probably right there on the side wall of the box. Make sure that you uh, check in there before you throw the box away. Outside of that, uh, you're going to need a socket wrench, as well as a normal screw, uh, screwdriver as well, too. But your other parts uh, should be included in the bag that you get, so let's start building. First things you want to be aware of, so you know what you're getting into, is that the directions are mainly just picture directions. There aren't any written directions, per se, so uh, the pictures do seem to be pretty good, so as long as you're comfortable with that, you should be fine. And again, the tools that you need, screwdriver, hammer, wrench, and a half-inch socket. Okay. Right off the bat in step one, I want to give you a very important tip. You, At first I was kind of confused. It looks like you're taking a hammer and you're going to hammer this axle here, J, into H, which is this piece here. The interesting thing though is that you only have one H, which is up here, right? What they actually want you to do though, this is mislabeled, this should be I, not one. It's one of these little things right here. And what this, the whole purpose of this little thing is to allow you to set this cap in here and then you can pound J into that with this being the stabilizer without damaging the cap. So that's a really important tip and, and hopefully will save you some activity. Full disclosure, I do need to let you know that I did not personally figure that out. It was actually my wife, so I want to give her full credit for that. Uh, but this is what it should look like basically when you're done putting that axle. And again, it just sits in there as you pound it with the hammer. Finish step number six. By the time you finish step number six, you should have your car fully built with your axles. Really wasn't that much hard. It wasn't that hard, and I gotta give it credit. Uh, this actually was a pretty little handy piece, so I would make sure that you save that if you ever need to tighten the wheels. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to be putting some screws to connect the different pieces together. The screws are this side this size right here and they recommend that you use a screwdriver. Now if you were to use a screwdriver on a screw that size, by the end of it you're going to just totally tear up your elbow. So I highly recommend you just simply use a drill, make it much easier on yourself and you'll make it uh, even more secure. Alright, just don't over. Just a little tip on this particular part here as well too. You really need to have that socket wrench. The size of these bolts as you can see uh, is pretty long and so if you're just trying to use two wrenches it's really going to take quite a while. Yeah, obviously, if you have the right tool, it certainly makes things easier. And if you have a drill that attaches to your socket wrench, it's more power to you. Here are the directions on step number 11. Step number 11 has piece number L, which is this green piece right here, supposedly going into piece number E. Piece number E, you can see, has those little things on the top, which is actually right here. However, when you look at the back of E, supposedly, it has a little strip here, which it clearly does not have, okay, no matter how you shape it. That little piece that you're looking for is actually on N, which is the piece that you just put together. And these eventually are going to slide together, but you're going to have it backwards if you follow the directions as it says here. This E should actually be an N. So this is what it should look like once you have L connected to N. See how it fits in there nicely? And then these two things are going to just slide right over into F. Very easy. Okay, so this is what it should look like when you have N connected to L and then connected to F. And then you're just going to put your bolts right down through here. 17 now, and as you can see the trap track is really starting to take shape. And uh, basically at this point we're just going to make some additional screws to screw this together right here and continue on. On step number 22, as you're getting ready to bolt these things to the, or screw these things into the side, you're going to use the normal screws that you've been using all along. But just make sure that you do put these things in an, in an angle because you're trying to just screw to this end here. If you were to go straight in, you may not catch enough of this that you want. So just a little slight angle right there, and you'll be able to get it in more into the bulk of the body there. And then for the top screws, these aren't long enough here you're going to be using the other ones. And that's labeled correctly, the three and a quarter screws, and those will go right in there for you. You should have no problem. As well, too, it may be kind of easy to overlook, but when you are putting these side pieces on, you want to make sure that you are aligning these little nubs right here that you can see in with the bottom of these holes that you have in the bottom on each side. And it's kind of easy to overlook that, because if you just slide this thing on by itself, 
and you may not actually line those holes up so you have to make sure that you're looking underneath there and you see how that doesn't line up perfectly just bend it a little bit and you'll be fine as you get to literally the last step number 26 um, they don't really label what parts you're connecting together but it's actually over here on the top this is O and then this would be uh, F right here and the screw holes that you're looking for are just right there this stage now my friends you have the car built and you have your track built so it's really just a matter of putting the decals on and as you can see almost ready to go okay my friends well by now you have your decals on as you can see you've got your car made and pretty much you've got your extreme coaster done so again but for some of those mislabeling on the directions itself it really wasn't so bad if I could just give you one tip that is I think an absolute must tip it's definitely choose a drill over a screwdriver because otherwise your arm is just going to absolutely be killing you and outside of that my friends here's how it works and of course you put it on an incline it will go a lot farther than that so hopefully this video has been helpful and you too can build your own extreme roller coaster have fun